Hello children, how are you all? It's time again to get into what we have been learning about the structure of atom. Right, so we have learned about the different models of atom put forth by different scientists at different uh, times. So they were all not put uh, uh, forth or forward at uh, the same time. So what was the need for so many models of atom? Is not one sufficient for us to learn about atom? No, it is not because uh, those uh, atomic models which were initially told or told uh, told or put forth uh, were having some flaws and research was done uh, by the other scientists uh, following them uh, and uh, they found something new about uh, an extra about the structure of atom and they continued uh, developing the structure of atom so that was what uh, is the need for us uh, to uh, have uh, so many models so step by step uh, the whole structure of the atom uh, came out uh, so beautifully and uh, uh, we are learning a perfect and the right uh, model of the atom at present so the last time that we have learned uh, uh, was about uh, the Bohr's uh, model of uh, atom so children what was the Bohr's model of atom. Bohr's model of atom, it stated that uh, the electrons were revolving around the nucleus uh, in certain specific orbits uh, and uh, as long as the electrons are revolving in this, uh, they'll neither lose nor gain uh, energy. So these are called as the stationary states uh, and uh, whenever an electron jumps from uh, uh, lower energy level to higher energy level it requires some energy so it takes the energy from outside in the form of light or heat or electrical energy and jumps to higher energy levels and the next what would happen children so this energy again uh, where it uh, jumps back uh, uh, due to the instability and uh, the conditions are back again so to the ground state uh, uh, releasing the energy so children energy is absorbed and uh, during the jump off of the electron to higher energy levels and uh, during the jump uh, uh, down to the lower energy levels again energy is uh, released the same quantity of energy is released uh, and that gives a spectrum called as a line spectrum which we talked about uh, a little about it right okay and then next uh, we also talked about uh, uh, the flaws uh, of uh, um, Bohr's uh, model of atom it told about uh, uh, the line spectrum only about hydrogen atom but it could not explain the line spectrum of uh, atoms which were having uh, um, more than one electron uh, in them okay and uh, not only that it was not able to uh, explain to us or help us understand where the electrons are uh, are uh, exactly arranged so he said they are arranged outside but what kind of arrangement are they following uh, so that was not explained by Bohr's uh, model of atom right okay then uh, subsequently afterwards uh, Bohr and Bury uh, two scientists came forward uh, and put forth certain rules uh, uh, by which we can fill the uh, different orbits uh, by, with the uh, electrons now okay so the rules which were put forth uh, by the m uh, were their own were their, their own rules their own rules of their own mind or are they following some rule yes okay children so this uh, these rules which they have told they are not out of their, their own mind but by close observation of uh, uh, many things called as extra x-ray spectroscopy and uh, various uh, physical phenomena of light children and from that uh, they could understand uh, that um, uh, the electrons fill in a definite order and they have given this order so we are listening to what the nature of the atom is uh, but uh, we are not uh, uh, putting our own rules uh, so this uh, uh, class deals with uh, structure of atom but uh, the Bohr, now Bohr and Bury's scheme of uh, filling of uh, the electrons uh, in the different orbits of the atom. So children, so let us get into the details now. So children, we have uh, here uh, the Bohr and Bury scheme of uh, filling up uh, of the different orbits of an atom uh, with electrons. So what are the rules? So there are three rules children here, the three important rules. And uh, what are the rules? Rule 1 says that uh, the maximum electrons uh, are in an orbit uh, should be equal to 2n square. So it should be equal to 2n square. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? So Okay, right. It means uh, uh, there is a certain maximum of the electrons. Uh, and here, and uh, that's a maximum. And beyond that, uh, the orbit cannot have uh, um, uh, electrons. Uh, so, children, what does uh, this mean? We'll try to understand this. Uh, uh, and that is uh, 
uh, so children will see uh, certain shells. Now we know well the shells. So what are the shells children in an atom? So they are the K shell, then next we have the L shell, M shell and N shell. Okay, good. Right, okay. Now what is the uh, orbit or shell index for, uh, uh, this is the shell name, shell name and the index or uh, shell index or the number shell index uh, what's the number or shell index children for k shell what's the k shell's uh, shell index it is uh, one so it is denoted by n you know so write n is equal to one and here it is n equal to two it is n equal to three and n equal to four so in this the n denotes uh, the n denotes uh, the shell index okay all right uh, now we will see the maximum number of electrons uh, that these uh, can uh, uh, fill or, uh, or these orbits can have okay right so children now what is uh, the formula that we are seeing that's given by 2 and square so now okay maybe uh, substitute n equal to 1 it will become 2 into 1 square so that will become 2 into 1 that is equal to 2 right the next one is n equal to 2 that becomes 2 times 2 square that is 2 times 4 that is equal to 8 okay good and the next uh, uh, 2 times uh, 3 square that will be 2 times 9 that is 18 electrons in the third shell and uh, okay children right there we are uh, the next uh, we have uh, uh, 2 times uh, 4 square that will be equal to 2 times 16 that should be 32 so what are these numbers so these are the maximum number of electrons that uh, uh, can fill in each shell so for a case shell there should be a maximum of uh, two electrons and beyond two that shell cannot uh, uh, have okay the next one l shell l shell it can take a maximum of uh, eight electrons uh, and the m shell okay 18 and n shell it is uh, 32 electrons so that's the meaning of uh, the first uh, rule so maximum number of electrons in an orbit is equal to 2n square where n is uh, the orbit number or the shell index okay children so that's a that is the first rule explained here right okay now we'll get into the second rule what is the meaning of a second rule so before getting into the details of uh, the second rule i want you to understand uh, or know one term called as atomic number of an element what do you mean by atomic number of an element so we'll go back uh, to the structure of atom uh, after uh, Rudolf uh, this uh, Niels Bohr uh, uh, has uh, explained and uh, the subsequent scientists uh, uh, after the discovery of neutrons and protons okay right so now what are the um, uh, positive charged particles children in the atom so they are protons right and uh, where are these protons these protons are inside the nucleus of an atom right okay good so now these proton number within an atom's nucleus uh, they are called as the atomic number so number of uh, protons number of protons in the nucleus of an atom uh, that's called as uh, atomic uh, number right okay that's very good of you uh, right atomic number it is usually denoted by z children we'll be talking about uh, that a little later but still uh, this idea is necessary to understand uh, the second and other uh, rules uh, of a Bohr and Berry scheme okay now what else so we have seen the uh, number of protons that is called as atomic number and one more thing that I want to ask you is uh, uh, this atomic number which is the number of positive charges in the nucleus of an atom uh, now what will that be equal to so that naturally will be equal to the number of negative charges in a neutral atom in a neutral atom the number of negative charges who is carrying the negative charges they are the electrons right okay the electrons and the protons they are oppositely charged we know so the number of positive charges in a uh, a neutral atom should be equal to the number of negative charges that means uh, as many protons you have in an atom that many electrons you will also have so now the atomic number in a neutral atom it also indicates uh, the number of uh, electrons so, so children we can say that atomic number represents uh, the number of electrons in an atom which is neutral uh, of an element okay so this is about uh, atomic uh, number now what is the need for knowing this naturally we are talking about uh, the 
a filling of electrons in the different orbits. Now, one more term that we have to learn about uh, it is uh, uh, that uh, it is called as uh, uh, electronic configuration. Electronic configure configuration now why is this electronic configuration see children that picture that picture or representation of an atom to understand what how the electrons are arranged in the different uh, orbits of an atom we call it as uh, electronic configuration so what is the number of electrons in the first shell what is the number of electrons in the second orbit what is the number of electrons in the third orbit so if you're writing the k l m n shells and uh, representing the definite number of electrons that those uh, uh, atoms of the elements are having that representation of numbers in different shells we call that as electronic configuration okay children so that's what is required to understand the second rule of Bohr-Bury scheme so children right we are now considering this of the elements I've written what are called symbols of those elements so these are called the short-term notations of the elements so that hydrogen and helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. So I have written that. Now next one. See children, um, you carefully observe. So that is the atomic number of, uh, that Z indicates the atomic number. So these are the atomic numbers of uh, other respective elements uh, um, I have uh, taken. Right next, uh, hydrogen, its atomic number is 1. So uh, according to the Bohr's uh, first rule, bohr bury's uh, uh, first rule, what is the number? of uh, electrons uh, that uh, can go into the first shell so we know well it is uh, one so now uh, it, it is two sorry so it is two so now now how many electrons are there in the hydrogen atom so it is one so that's the one electron which is going into the first shell which is near most uh, that is the k shell right next one and helium how many electrons are there so two how many electrons can be filled into the first shell that's two so those two electrons are getting to or the first shell or first orbit the next one lithium now lithium has uh, three electrons uh, according to the first rule uh, of both body scheme uh, the first electron uh, the two first two electrons should get into the k shell and the next electron should get into the l shell is it not yes the next one now beryllium beryllium the atomic number is four that means there are four electrons uh, the first shell can take two electrons the remaining it uh, will go into two why sir why why can't they go uh, there uh, to the next one so that is uh, uh, what we'll be learning in the third rule so the third rule uh, 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 that third rule states that unless unless the lower orbits are uh, completely filled uh, the electrons cannot go into the next higher orbits that is the rule children so we'll be learning as you go uh, along right next one uh, boron it is five there is two electrons uh, uh, in the first uh, orbit and uh, three electrons here the total will be uh, five okay right carbon is six so it, i'll be writing two four nitrogen is seven so it becomes two five and oxygen it is two six uh, fluorine it is two seven and the neon it is two eight so children there we are so we have seen uh, that the maximum that the first orbit can take uh, is two so that's filled and uh, the last that is neon when you go to so the second orbit also is filled to its uh, maximum capacity right good now what else what else uh, what else so okay children we also see the pictorial pictorial representations for each of these uh, um, as we can see the pictorial details uh, the shells are denoted by the shells are denoted by the circles around the nucleus uh, and um, uh, the different uh, shells and the electrons that are uh, filled in the uh, graphical representation you can clearly see and uh, uh, you can observe that uh, the shells are getting filled uh, and they are following certain order right okay that's good now, now you can see something special in these uh, uh, in um, calcium or otherwise in a uh, potassium and uh, those uh, those you have find you find something different there and there's something different uh, what is different so that is because of uh, the second uh, uh, rule that we learn all uh, right okay children what is the second rule now okay if at all we continue to write uh, the electronic configuration uh, uh, of uh, some of the elements uh, beyond uh, neon then you will understand things uh, better uh, and uh, there uh, we employ what is called as the second uh, rule of Bohr-Bury Bohr uh, scheme 
So children, right? Uh, we are back again to understand uh, uh, these uh, the next uh, ten elements uh, uh, of uh, the uh, order. And uh, what are uh, these elements? Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, aragon, plus potassium and calcium, and their respective atomic uh, numbers I have written there. Uh, and now we'll see how the electrons are filling. So right, so we'll follow the same order that is um, um, Bohr's uh, Bohr Berry's uh, uh, rule one, and uh, try to fill. Uh, and uh, then uh, there at one point we'll understand uh, the utility of uh, the second rule so that is what we are learning so to understand all this we are doing try, try to understand uh, uh, you know try to understand the second rule how it uh, plays a role in uh, filling of the electrons in the different orbits of an atom of an element right sodium so the first shell it should take uh, two electrons very good so i'll write i uh, better write it uh, uh, neatly with uh, some of the pen children so that uh, it becomes easier for us to uh, distinguish right okay now sodium it is uh, two electrons that's good two electrons in the uh, first orbit so the remaining are nine so right uh, i am going to write uh, the eight here and uh, okay naturally uh, that's two eight okay so there's a second shell should fill a maximum of uh, eight electrons okay that's good and the next electron uh, should naturally get into uh what is called uh, the m shell okay good and uh, now we are moving to uh magnesium magnesium the first shell should take uh, a maximum of two electrons very good and uh, the next should take eight electrons uh, the next uh, should take uh, uh, two because it has a maximum capacity of uh, 18 the third shell uh, 2 into 3 square should give 2 into 9 that should be equal to 18 so the maximum uh, for the third shell or m shell should be uh, 2 I mean sorry that uh, that should be 18 so it is 2 so less than 18 so we have occupied that and the next one 13 it is 2 8 3 that's good aluminium silicon 14 2 8 Four, very good. Phosphorus is two, eight, five, nice, and that's two, eight, six. Okay, that's very good. And then two, eight, seven, five, two, eight, eight. That's good. So we have done uh, the configuration of uh, argon. Now you see what happens. Two, eight, nine. That is wrong. What well, you are right. It is two, eight, nine. That is uh, the wrong representation of uh, uh, the electron configuration for potassium. Why? There you are. You come to what is called the importance of uh, uh, rule 2. What is rule 2? Rule 2 states that a maximum of 8 electrons uh, can take uh, the outermost orbit. Now, this is the outermost orbit at present. Right, okay. So, it should uh, take 18 electrons. Uh, that's a maximum. But here it is not allowed to take the outermost orbit is not allowed to take more than eight electrons okay so that is what uh, we are doing here so we will write uh, eight electrons here and when we write eight electrons there wow how many more electrons are still left so that is one and that one it goes uh, to n shell so that is um, uh, the rule two of a uh, body scheme now now following that uh, you will do the same thing almost uh, like that two calcium two eight eight and uh, two so children this is how you fill the different orbits uh, of uh, the atom according to bohr bari uh, scheme right okay children now what about uh, this uh, rule three now i just touched uh, this uh, rule three while uh, explaining uh, uh, to you the um, this uh, electronic configuration so children so why are we not filling the uh, orbits which are in front of this that is uh, uh, why are we not filling? Uh, uh, say, I'll just give you an example, children. Why should we write it as 281? Why not as uh, uh, 2, 8, and 1? Why not? So, this is wrong because that's wrong because the filling should go in an order. So, the lower orbits uh, should be filled first. Uh, uh, okay, so and then next to the higher orbits or the orbits uh, with a greater energy should be filled. Uh, so, the uh, filling uh, of uh, this uh, should be complete then only the next orbit goes and gets filled so if we fill eight here that's complete and then we can go to the next one so that is how 
I can't feel uh, in uh, this way. So this is wrong uh, way of representing electronic configuration. Now, okay, children, we know what uh, uh, we have learned. So, children, these representations uh, uh, can also be shown uh, graphically, as you can see in the figure, and uh, note down how the electronic configuration is gradually changing uh, uh, from uh, one element to another element. Uh, so, children, right? Uh, so that's for uh, now, and uh, we'll just uh, quickly recapitulate uh, our learning. So, children, right, uh, we will recapitulate uh, now about uh, what we have learned uh, uh, today. So, we are talking about uh, how Bohr and uh, Bure scheme was stated uh, and uh, what are the rules uh, of uh, filling of uh, uh, the uh, different orbits of the atom. Uh, that uh, is uh, telling uh, or giving uh, three rules. Uh, one is uh, uh, the first rule is maximum electrons that can uh, be occupied uh, in an uh, orbit. So, children, you can see there are uh, four orbits, uh, uh, depicted only four orbits. There can be any number of orbits in an atom, children. So, um, so the first uh, K shell, L shell, M shell, and N shell, and their uh, respective shell index uh, number it is uh, n equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, uh, respectively. And uh, you see, children, the maximum number of electrons uh, by using the formula 2n square gives us uh, uh, 2 electrons maximum for the first shell, 8 electrons in the next shell, 18 electrons in the uh, third shell and uh, fourth shell, third two electrons are denoted. Uh, uh, they are, are not denoted uh, by uh, the number of electrons. Children, I can also place if you want. Uh, uh, I can place the first two electrons, first two electrons, uh, and the next uh, one, two, three, four, and five, and uh, six. Uh, then comes seven and eight. So the eight electrons, uh, and I can fill uh, uh, eight in here and thirty-two there. Uh, but uh, we'll be following uh, the second rule uh, in order to fill those. Uh, uh, second and uh, the third and uh, the fourth shells. So what is the second rule? So the second rule states that uh, only eight electrons are allowed uh, uh, to fill the, the uh, shell which is outermost and only after that uh, uh, after that uh, they will go to the next uh, uh, shell after filling uh, the certain capacity that is eight again they will fill uh, the lower shell. So uh, that is how uh, the uh, second rule uh, tells uh, second rule tells that uh, a maximum of eight electrons only are allowed to go into uh, a given uh, shell or orbit okay right next one what about uh, the third one so children uh, how are we filling the electrons when we gradually when we check uh, we are gradually filling the electrons uh, uh, from the bottom that is uh, from the innermost shell or orbit uh, uh, and uh, we keep on filling and go outward uh, that's the way we should fill this is called the above principle of bow principle okay for your information so what is this uh, so unless the lower orbits uh, are filled uh, to their capacity we cannot go to the next orbit so this is how children we will uh, uh, fill so these are the three rules of both body scheme and uh, they help in writing what is called as the electronic uh, configuration which is very very important uh, and has a utility in uh, in knowing uh, what are called the nature of the elements uh, or uh, the properties of uh, uh, atoms how they behave what kind of chemical reactions they undergo what kind of bonding which is called chemical bonding takes place uh, and all those uh, they are hidden uh, just in the arrangement of uh, the electrons in the different uh, orbits of uh, the atom of an element so just children chemical properties of the atoms which we talked are chemical properties of the elements they are dependent upon this core property which is uh, called the electronic configuration once you are uh, you are well averse with uh, well versed with uh, uh, well versed i mean uh, well versed with uh, electronic configuration you would be telling uh, uh, an n number of properties uh, of all the elements uh, are so easy to learn chemistry so it was a basic uh, uh, scheme of uh, uh, writing the electronic uh, configuration so and uh, who proposed them children Bohr and uh, uh, Barry thank you very much